It stinks on so many levels, as I said. And the real story here is this. This ain't Norman, Oklahoma, Lincoln. This is Los Angeles. This market is number two in the country. And people say, oh, the media here is soft. And those of us that work in the media know that. We're not like the East Coast. We're not New York. We're not Boston. We're not Philly. We're more laid back. We're more reserved. We're more relaxed. Well, you can feel that way if you choose. I think our, th- our folks are pretty analytical here, and I don't think they're afraid. But I'll say this. If this is a game you want to play, you better win. Pretty simple. Ask Clay Helton what it was like with the media. They didn't win. What happened to Clay Helton? What happened to the program? You better win now, 10-year deal or not. You want to start playing that game? I'm God, and this is how we're doing it. And if you don't like it, we're going to suspend you. We're going to revoke your credential. We're going to take your, your access away from you. No one cares, Lincoln. No one cares if you take away our credentials. Because people can sit at home and watch the game. And every mistake you make, and every turnover, they can rip you to shreds. It's pretty simple. You don't mess with people. It's arrogant. It's out of bounds. It's little market. And if anybody had any guts, and I'll suggest it here, and I'll stick to it if anybody wants to join me, you want to suspend Luca Evans? You want to take his credential? You want to punish him? How about we do this? How about nobody talks about USC football for two weeks? How about the LA Times doesn't have Bill Plasky or Dylan Hernandez write about it? How about they don't have their beat reporter out there? How about we try that? How about nobody even acknowledges your existence for two weeks? So you want the media to lock arms against USC? Well, I'm just saying, if that's how we're going to play the game. Well, if you go on social media, that kind of feels like they are locking arms. Beat writers that cover other sports in L.A., beat writers from other outlets that cover USC, beat writers who are no longer in L.A. but are still covering sports in other markets, like Bill Oram, all weighed in last night in support of this young writer. So let's have the guts. Yeah, it's one thing to do it on Twitter with those muscles. How about we do this? How about how about everybody gets together and goes, fine, Carol Folt, we're not going to talk about USC for two weeks. And the only thing we'll talk about are negative things. We can do that. We can all band together and do that. Because you know what? There are things to talk about. We can always find things to talk about. You know, if you're going to have a honeymoon period, then act like it. If you're on top, you you don't play this game. This is when you're more magnanimous. This is when you're more open. This is when you want people to embrace you. If you're one and two, are you having this conversation? I don't think so. I go back to context, Fred. This isn't a tabloid outlet trying to find dirt on your players, maybe crossing the line journalistically. This is a beat reporter who is working on a feel-good story and maybe got the idea based on hearing these two players talk off to the side of a podium before they talk to the general media on media day for USC football. So what? Context, I think, is a big deal here. Did he cross the line and policies that USC has set up? Well, I don't know their policies. If it says don't talk to players unless they're standing on a podium and there's a microphone in front of them, then I guess technically he violated the policy. But context means something here, doesn't it? It means something. And uh, the Southern California News Group, the Register and the Daily News, I don't think they're a tabloid. And if you really want to go further into it, uh, all, all they want are puff pieces anyway. That's what USC wants, puff pieces. Puff pieces. I'll tell you who, act, who also acts like this. The Clippers. The Clippers act like this. Hey, you know, we'd like uh, anybody available to talk to us. Well, no. No. All right, you guys, uh, you know, you guys aren't fans. You didn't say good things. Okay, no problem. No problem. Don't make them available. We'll all survive. We'll all go on. You have to understand how to operate in a market this size. You have to understand the dynamic of all of this. And it kind of pisses me off because I've been here for so long and I understand how major markets work. This thought process, would Phil Jackson do that? Phil Jackson, would he do that? Seriously, would Dave Roberts do that? Would Joe Madden manage the Angels, would he do that? My God, Tyron Lue is the coach of the Clippers, would he do that? Would Sean McVay do that? I'll tell you something. 
Can I tell you one story? And this is a true story. So about two years ago, I did a Zoom interview with Sean McVay, and we did it for Going Rogan on Channel 4. This is true. I've never told the story. And while we're doing it, I'm thinking, God, he doesn't seem like he's in a very good mood. It wasn't me. I didn't ask anything to upset him. But I thought, he's, he doesn't seem like he's in a very good mood. Okay. The interview was done. We thanked him. It was in the can. As we say, it was recorded. And then we were going to run it. We edited a little of it because there were some parts that were like, he didn't seem happy. You want to know something? 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning, I got a text. You know who that text came from? Sean McVeigh. And you know what he said? I'm sorry about tonight. I wasn't my best. And I want you to know that. I'm sorry. That's the coach of the Rams who did an interview. I didn't need to tell that story. That was the coach of the Rams. He didn't need to do that. Do you think Lincoln Riley would do that? Mr. We're taking your credential away from you? We'll fix you real good? You think he would do that? Brandon Staley. Brandon Staley is getting a little testy. And he has reason to be a little testy. But he faces the music. You think he would yank somebody's credential? You think the Chargers, when they're, somebody's grilling Brandon Staley, would yank their credential? Really? But USC would? I've never heard Chip Kelly have a problem like this. I've never heard that happen. They might pull you to the side and say, hey, what are you doing? And you tell me, all right, be careful. The reporter gets paid to report. And if you use this bit, well, these are kids, garbage, they get paid. Garbage. It's bad. It's wrong. It's a bad precedent. They're wrong at USC. They need to own up to it and understand it. It's petty. It's cheap. I think people should just say, the hell with it. There you go. For two weeks, good luck. You got Arizona State and you got, what, Colorado. Well, that's a big game. Both are on the road, right? Yep. Okay. So why couldn't Luca Evans, as a reporter from Los Angeles, an accredited newspaper, apply for a credential from Arizona State? Why couldn't he apply for a credential from Colorado? Why would they ban him as an accredited media member from Los Angeles, writing for major publications? Why would they ban him? He didn't do anything to them. They're not going to ban the media. What did he do wrong? Why couldn't he do that? Why couldn't they get around it like that? Think Coach Prime would suspend a media reporter? Do I think Coach Prime would? Yeah. Never. Do you? No. 